Hello everyone, this is your host Sirisha Akhila and I welcome you back to another powerful episode of Life Musings by Dr. Padma Janadi Rama. Do you accept your emotions, appreciate and have empathy like a capacity to sense the feelings for others? Well, today's topic, emotional intelligence might be a way to deepen that and to help us learn more, we have our expert Dr. Padma Janadi Rama. She is a psychology faculty, life coach, motivational speaker and also an academic advisor. Hello, Padma Jagaru. How are you doing? Uh, hi, Sirisha. Nice to be here. And uh, you know, very nice, so important topic. Right? Yes, yeah. very exciting. Mm -hmm. So let's start by learning what is the whole concept of emotional intelligence. You know, I, I especially like this topic, emotional intelligence, and I cannot stress enough how much of an importance this is playing Absolutely. these days. You know, yes. and uh, like probably it's, uh, ten years back. We never heard about what is being emotionally intelligent. We only heard about having a high IQ. You know, my child is very smart. I have this great IQ. My child is gifted. Uh, you know, we, we only refer to people as, oh, she's intelligent or she's not intelligent or he's yeah. intelligent, he's not intelligent. But what is this emotional intelligence which we are learning about? Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence is called EQ, just like IQ is intelligence quotient. EQ is your emotional intelligence quotient. Okay. Okay, and it has become very, very important. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as you see a person, you can tell whether that person is emotionally intelligent or not. And emotional intelligence has become the backbone for your success, be at mm -hmm. work, be it in relationships, or as a person. You it's know, true. yeah. Because earlier we used to say that a person is intelligent because he had good verbal skills, good spatial skills, or, you know, he had good kinesthetic skills. Kinesthetic skills are like where you are very good at with your arms or, you know, with your hands, uh, with your feet. So a ballet dancer is supposed to be having good kinesthetic skills yeah. or a surgeon who is deft with their hands while doing surgery because they have to manure in narrow places. Yeah. They're supposed to have good kinesthetic skills. Mm -hmm. And, and then uh, somebody who is very good in nature, they're good with plants, animals, they are born with the naturalistic skills and mathematical skills, logic skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there comes something which we are more interested in now, which is like human relationships. Two types of intelligences are being talked here. One is interpersonal relationships, inter, okay. which is between two people. Mm -hmm. Intrapersonal intelligence is another one, which is being intelligent for yourself, like intra, within yourself, yeah. being self-aware. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a very important concept too, like intrapersonal intelligence, knowing what you want, where yeah. you want to go, yeah. you know, what you want to do in life, okay. you know, where you want to go from here. Mm -hmm. How do you want to improve? That is intrapersonal intelligence, okay. knowing your likes, dislikes, your strengths, your weaknesses, mm -hmm. so that you can uh, grow from there. Right. That is intra. And interpersonal is also important. Just by knowing everything, you know, being uh, very intelligent is not enough these days. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, you have to have that social skills yeah. because social skills make you either a success or a failure. So Daniel Goleman mm -hmm. is a, a scientist who or a psychologist who coined this term emotional intelligence. Okay. What he says is, you know, emotional intelligence has certain concepts put into play, which are self-awareness. Okay being aware of your emotions, being aware of your feelings, 
and then self-regulation. Okay, I know now I'm getting angry. Mm -hmm. So if I'm emotionally intelligent, I will control my anger. I will take a step back, walk away from the situation, mm -hmm. take deep breaths. That is self-regulation. An emotionally intelligent person will do that. Instead of like, okay, I'm upset. I'm going to scream here or I'm going to lose it here. So that is self-regulation. And you also have to, a certain amount of motivation. You need yeah. to be motivated to do this. Correct. Right? And then you have to have empathy. Empathy yes. forms a big, big part of your emotional intelligence. Right. Being empathetic. In a, mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of people being a little bit rude. You know, they don't care what's going on with others. They're about themselves. They're mm -hmm. talking, you know, as if they the world, whole world revolves around them. So you don't like to be around those people or you, those people don't go far in life because they're not showing empathy. Mm -hmm. Or let's put it this way. People who show empathy go far in life. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then another important aspect of emotional intelligence is social skills. How good are socials, your social skills? You know, so all these put together form emotional intelligence according to Daniel Goldman. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you measure, you might ask me, how mm -hmm. do you measure this emotional intelligence, yeah. right? So like, say, for example, you, if you're being hired for a job, mm -hmm. I don't care, or people don't, these days don't give that much. Yes, your grades are important, where you're coming from is important, what, your education level is important, mm -hmm. uh, your qualification is important. But in the interview, what we see is how emotionally intelligent you are, which is measured by the way you make an eye contact, mm -hmm. the way you make a conversation, you know, uh, your enthusiasm, your motivation, you know, uh, why you're interested in the job, okay. you know, all these kinds of things play a big role and give a, a clue to your emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. For example, like you go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's your ser server sees you that you are sniffling and you have cold. So, you know, the person who is waiting on you. So he will ask you, uh, oh, you seem to ha be having a cold. Like, do you want to try some hot soup, which we have, which is like an immune booster. And like, you know, it really helps you soothe your um, throat, sniffles, mm -hmm. right? So you kind of like that environment where you're cared for empathy. Yeah. Yes. Right? So yes. that is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So are people born with emotional intelligence or is it something that can be taught easily? Good question. Because just like any behavior, your emotional intelligence can also be taught. Okay. You know, that's why we, we stress this point that you have to be emotionally, emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, we might be growing up in an environment where um, our parents are very highly emotionally intelligent. Yeah. We, and we learn from our environment mm -hmm. by observational learning. We observe yeah. and learn. That's a big part of learning. So if your parents are high on empathy, mm -hmm. if your parents are high on, um, you know, talking to people or high on social skills, mm -hmm. you automatically learn that. Yeah. You know, if your parents are volunteering or if your parents are always have friends around, you know, they're going out, they're very bubbly and kind of thing. So it becomes second nature to you. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, yeah, not everybody is an extrovert. Not yes. everybody has high social skills. True. What if your parents were, you know, are not like like that? So but then your job demands that you you have certain amount of emotional skills yeah. or you want to learn. So you have you can develop them by practicing mm -hmm. empathy. OK. You know, and, mm -hmm. and it, we have to do this in even in schools and colleges, like where we teach them to be right. emotionally intelligent. Because we are saying, obviously, that uh, you have to be emotionally intelligent to get a job or you have mm -hmm. to show. The, I mean, it doesn't take much. Yes. All it needs is like, you know, showing empathy, showing uh, uh, that caring attitude to other people, showing positivity, uh, you know, interaction yes. and, and practice. Mm -hmm. you, if you practice this, you will perfect that. You know, the importance being that if you are an emotional, intelligent person, you know, you will do well in your jobs. Mm -hmm. You will be promoted. A person who is going to be promoted will be high on their EQ, you know, emotional intelligence skills. I mean, let's take a simple scenario. You know, now I have one promotion to give. Mm -hmm. You know, I have two um, applicants. One is, uh, both are equally qualified. Both have equal yeah. experience. Okay. So now who do I give this promotion to? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this promotion to the person who is, high on EQ, who is like friendly to everyone around, you know, who comes to the office and thinks out of the box and mm -hmm. does more work than what is needed, yeah. you know, always there for other people, 
you know, goes that extra mile, try, is always uh, ready to mentor other people. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You know, it, he, because giving a promotion to that person makes my job easier mm -hmm. as a manager. Yeah. He's going to look out or she's going to look out for me and, you know, uh, take that extra step and, and uh, create a positive environment around. Right. So with that in mind, we have to teach our kids to be more emotional. So how do we do that? We can start at home. Like everything starts at home. You know, as parents, we can show our kids to be emotionally intelligent by being good role models. Mm -hmm. Don't talk bad about other people. Yes. You know, don't put other people down. Mm -hmm. Don't show prejudice. Mm -hmm. in, in, on the other hand, show empathy. Yeah. You know, cultivate positiveness. You know, encourage your child to have social relationships. Mm -hmm. Help them. Initially, some children might, uh, might not find it easy to get into those mode of interacting with their friends or, you know, making friendships, you have then have to step in and teach them, you know, uh, help them set up play dates and start mm -hmm. from there. You know, don't take it for granted that, oh, my child is an introvert or she doesn't like interaction. Make it a habit. And you, you probably, yeah. Yeah, we have to give them a little push. Right, maybe, yes. Yeah. And also you show by example. Yeah. You know, you have positive relationships, you cultivate relationships, have mm -hmm. friends. Yeah. Uh, so that way we can encourage. Uh, Again, uh, set an example. Like set an example. Always right. Insane. Mm -hmm. that, so. Right. That's true. So you have been talking about EQ. Right. What does it mean and how more important it is in one's personality? See, EQ is about emotion. Big word. Mm. Emotion intelligence. Emotional balance. Okay. You know, and emotional intelligence is about understanding emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, perceiving emotions. Let's put it this way. Perceiving emotions first, mm. understanding them, okay. and then using what you understood and then managing your emotions. Okay. Now, let's take these one step at a time. Let's say now you and I are interacting, for example. Okay. okay. Now, suppose you are upset. You are angry. You are not saying it in words, but I have to look at your body language. <laughs> I have to see that you're a little bit irritated. You're trying to keep it to yourself. You're, you know, you want that space. So I have to understand that Sirisha today is not in her mood. She's irritated. So mm -hmm. I perceive that in your facial expressions or you're in a body language. And then I understand what I perceive. Then I said, now I use this information, which I understood, right? Mm -hmm. Then I take a step back. Okay, she's irritated. I'm not going to step on her feet. Give her some time so that she calms down and, she comes into her own self, like, you know, right. so perceiving, understanding and using and then managing what you understand and managing mm. your own emotions yeah. to resolve the situation mm. or balance the emotions which, you are, which are being presented to you is the main crux. Like, you know, many a times you see this happens in every household. You know, maybe you're having a conversation with your husband or with, with your spouse mm -hmm. and maybe with children. Yeah. You know, somebody is upset. They come home, they throw things and I'm upset. You know, my teacher did this or my boss did this or my friend did, did this. I'm so upset. And they throw something and you get upset that they threw something. Yeah. And now you pick a fight. Why did you do this? You always do this. If you're angry, angry can you just keep it to yourself kind of thing? At that time, you probably have to take a step back that understand that that person is angry. You know, if they throw a remote, you don't throw another remote at them. You know, <laughs> ultimately you don't have TV at home. Then. <laughs> so what you need to do is like manage your emotions, take a step mm -hmm. back, control your anger. You know, uh, when that other person calms down, you come back and tell them, you know what? This is not the right way to interact. I know you're upset. You know, do you want to talk about it? So that is good management of emotions. Count one to ten. Oh, count one to ten. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, so what what kind of real life example um you know um can you give to enhance our EQs? Uh, see, uh, one big example I would like to give everybody is as I said, like with the spouse or with the, your mm -hmm. teenage children. Yeah. You know, so our teenage children have a lot of complaints and they their emotions are running haywire. Hmm. what is happening in our teenagers is like for them amygdala which processes our emotions amygdala processes emotions okay, okay? it is racing ahead it is racing ahead so fast for mm -hmm. them obviously it's their teenage you know mm -hmm. their hormones are racing ahead and their amygdala the part of the brain that is processing emotions is developing fast there are more neuronal connections so it's like live wire snap 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 yeah. okay mm -hmm. so 
But then their prefrontal cortex, which is right in, in up here, which is involved in cognition, planning, execution, thinking, and higher order processing is developing, but developing a little bit slowly, <laughs> you know? So, so that's why you see more tantrums in your uh, teenagers because they can't control their emotions, right. you know? And then um, they're going to lose it. They're going to scream at you. They, and you know, you get upset. Oh, you answered back to me. I'm so upset about this. And then they calm down and they come back and say, Mom, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You know, it's my hormones talking, right? <laughs> because that would be nice. That would be nice, right? You know, um, see, that is that part of growing up. So as parents, we don't keep that in mind, you know? We, we say that, okay, we expect them to be maintain that normal behavior all the time. Mm -hmm. So with this information, we, we need to keep in mind that, okay, maybe the child is like frustrated about something. Maybe like, you know, he's, they're having a tough day. Uh, I don't need to put my disciplinary action right now, okay. you know, give them some time to calm down. So when they calm down, they, they will use this, this part of their brain, <laughs> uh, frontal <laughs> cortex, and then they will listen to you, listen to what you're saying. So that kind of thing, see, this is, you're teaching them. Right. You know, you're teaching them to take a step back when they're mm -hmm. upset, mm -hmm. you know? So then they know how to balance and control their emotions. So it's very important that when you have to be in, in control, don't lose it when they lose it, yeah. <laughs> right? So then it's not going to go anywhere. In fact, it's like more words are going to be exchanged, you know, harsh words are going to be exchanged, which you mm -hmm. cannot take back, yeah. you know, and then it's going to um, probably sometimes things go out of control. Yeah. Uh, kids become violent, parents become violent, and somebody has to intervene. So we don't want to do that. Yeah, that's, you know, this goes too far. It goes too yeah. far. So, uh, of course, you might think, okay, I'm a parent. I'm the older one here. Why should I take a step back? Yeah. No, this situation demands <laughs> that you take a step back because two things, you're going to achieve two things. One, mm -hmm. you're going to teach the kid how to control their emotions okay. by role modeling. Yes. Two, you're going to help the kid understand their own emotions. And then, and, and, and it's going to tell them and it's going to teach them by example that, see, my mom and dad are always going to help me grow, help right. keep my emotions in check. And, and you can tell them, you know, um, all of us get angry, all of us are upset. Yes. So how do we control this? Understand what, when are we getting our emotions up? When mm -hmm. are we losing it? Understand those situations, observe. journal, observe, and journal them. Yeah. Write them down. Sometimes you get, you have so many feelings, so many emotions which you can control. You don't know what to do with them. Yeah. Write them down. Then you can, while you're writing them down, you process them, you calm down. And then you might understand that, okay, this is not such a big deal. You know, right. I probably was overdoing it. So that is very important. See. You see uh, people who are not emotionally intelligent at work. These are like drama queens, as they say. <laughs> oh, the whole world ends. Like, you know, they just throw a tantrum right in, in the work. And uh, you are like, oh, what just happened? Like, <laughs> kind of thing. So, there are people. <laughs> there are people, you know, there are people who don't control their yeah. emotions. And, and they make, they make a, a joke of themselves when you do. People observe. Yeah. People observe uh, everyone, you know, you're, you're, because we express all this emotions through our nonverbal um, expressions like your eye movement your you know your laughter or your body language or uh, your okay. verbal of course yeah. yeah so you have to be very careful in how you express very nice yes. very nice mm -hmm. really good yeah. it was amazing tips and i completely agree that we have to teach our kids right. about eq and mm -hmm. ei right yeah <laughs> Right. So once again, it was a great talking to you. Right. Yeah. Uh, th thank you. As I said, you know, I would advise everybody to practice good emotional intelligence. Always understand that it is a combination of intra and inter within yourselves and between other people, you know. So it is intra plus inter is equal to emotional intelligence. Awesome. Yeah. I want to convey an important message here regarding emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence plays a very big role in success in our workplace these days. You know, people don't care or don't give that much importance to your qualifications. You might be coming from an Ivy League or you might have a 4.0. It does not matter. What matters is how emotionally intelligent you are. Like say, for example, you like to go to a particular store 
and you like to shop there on a regular basis. Not that they have the best merchandise around, but it could be that there is excellent customer service. You know, one example I would give is like Costco. I go to Costco very often and I like to shop there. One big reason is that Costco people are very friendly. They have the latest merchandise, of course, but the important factor that makes me go there again and again is the friendly staff. For example, if, if I need something at the checkout, I don't need to go and get uh, what I need. You know, somebody runs for me and gets that for me. See, that kind of involvement from the customer service is what makes me go to Costco again and again. You know, and I heard that Costco gives good EQ uh, training for their employers. So that is what I, I want you all to pay notice to. You know, good EQ skills, being there, being present, having a good smile, you know, uh, making that eye contact, showing empathy, you know, understanding that you, the other person is going to appreciate what you do, you know, and that is very important because this will give you good promotions, will help you raise in your uh, profession, you know, will help you develop healthy relationships and it will keep you happy and healthy because when you have good control on your emotions, you will have good mental and physical health. You know, you'll have your blood pressure in check. You'll have good heart health. You will, you will be away from uh, depression and anxiety. So it's a win-win situation. So develop that EQ and go get the work. That was a great message, Padma Jagaru. I'm going to apply it in on my own life. <laughs> really good tips. And I completely agree that we need to teach this to the next, next generation uh, kids about EI. So we'll meet again with more exciting episodes like this in our future episodes. Please subscribe to Mana TV YouTube, Mana TV Facebook channel, and watch us on Yup TV. Just stay healthy, stay happy, and stay smiling. Goodbye. Bye.